Welcome to the NFL Week 14 Sunday Slate Breakdown here at Lineups. I'm your host, Jacob Wayne, joined by Cody Malmstrom and Will Schwartz. All right, let's move on to the final game on the board. The game of the week, in my opinion. Buffalo Bills at the Kansas City Chiefs, competing with the Cowboys and Eagles for the game of the week, but should be an awesome one. Always fun to watch Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes square off. Looking at a spread of down to minus one and a half for the Chiefs, over or under 48 and a half points. I have a lot of thoughts in this game. I'm assuming Cody has a lot of thoughts in this game, but Schwartz, I'm going to let you go first on this one. How are you feeling about the Chiefs coming off that loss to the Packers on Sunday Night Football? Dude, I'm so ready to get burned. I'm buying low on the Chiefs. They've looked rough recently, but if there's anything we've learned from these Chiefs, is that that's the exception and not the rule. They're going to bounce back eventually. I think it's going to happen right now. We're talking about the Mahomes under a field goal thing. I don't love trends, but some things aren't trends. It's just that really good quarterbacks win home games. And when they're given a small spread, usually a win is going to be a cover as well. So I think that Mahomes under a field goal at our head angle is great here. Call it an angle. It hits all the same. I think the Matt Milano injury is still a serious issue. We talk about, uh, we've talked a lot in this show about how, Good middle linebacking crews are really important when you're going up against mobile quarterbacks. Now, Patrick Mahomes is not a mobile quarterback in the sense that he's going to pop off for 95 rushing yards on 12 carries. What Mahomes does do better than maybe anyone ever has in this game of football is use his level of athleticism behind the line of scrimmage to open up passes and create opportunities and even scramble. He's made a huge scramble conversion in like almost every big Chiefs when it feels like. Milano... Uh, was a kind, is the kind of guy who can limit that. He can cover while spying and force ever. He can allow the Bills defense to stay home while Mahomes is doing his behind the line of scrimmage stuff. He's out. That's a huge problem. And I think conversely, the Chiefs have the dudes in the front seven to limit Josh Allen's physical gifts. He's great against the blitz, but bad against the pressure. This is interesting. The Chiefs blitz a lot, but they do get home. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But I, I think that there will be some big plays available for Allen for that reason, but I, I think there's going to be classic Josh Allen turnovers at some point in this one, just with the with the level at which the Chiefs are able to get home, uh, even against mobile quarterbacks. I think this is a fascinating game. It's been one of the AFC defining matchups over the past few years, but this could be a dagger for the Bills if they don't pull the upset out. Yeah, yeah. Bills season's on the line in this game. If they lose, they're done. Um, but I think they're going to win. And... Schwartz, a few points I want to bring up that you mentioned. First of all, the Matt Milano injury has been a big issue, but it gave an opportunity to Tyrell Dodson to get on the field, who has been PFS' second highest graded linebacker this season. He's been excellent, and I think that's going to continue here. The Bills are in a great spot here. The Chiefs had a road Sunday night football game up in Lambeau, traveling back home from it. The Bills, meanwhile, have a huge rest edge off their bye week from last week. The Bills have been the most unlucky team in the NFL this season, minus 2.6 rating according to team rankings. And I love backing them uh, in this spot for a few reasons. First of all, you talked about the Chiefs pass rush. The Bills are going to put pressure on Patrick Mahomes here. Their third in pass rush win rate. The Chiefs tackles to me have been a very big weakness, especially when they are getting flagged for their false starts, which wasn't happening at the beginning of the year as Cody can test to from all the way back in that Lions Chiefs game. Um, but Josh Allen has just been better than Patrick Mahomes this season by virtually every metric. Better in PFF passing grade, better in yards per attempt, even better in turnover worthy play rate. Allen's actually has Allen actually has the sixth lowest turnover worthy play rate. We love to talk about Josh Allen's interceptions. He's been unlucky in that regard to have so many turnover worthy, so few turnover worthy plays, but higher amount of interceptions. Big issue for me here. The Chiefs just don't have the skill players right now to really compete. Travis Kelsey is clearly declining at 34 years old. No, I'm not going to say it's because of Taylor Swift, but he is having one of his worst seasons. He just looks a step slower, and his yards per route run, yards per reception have declined. And I think the Chiefs just don't have enough answers for this Bills defense. And the Bills defense has had some issues this season, but they're getting healthier. Coming off the bye week, I think they're going to be able to have some success, but Bill's offense is the best unit on the field in this game, in my opinion. Third in DVOA, fourth in EPA. Josh Allen is going to win this game for them coming off the bye week. Very excited to see what Joe Brady cooks up, new offense coordinator for them, but love the Bills in this spot. Cody, how are you feeling about this game? Well, you know I love the Mahomes angle, uh, anything under three. So what's the best way to bypass that? Wong teaser, baby. Wong you know teaser. It was coming. <laughs> yep. I love me some Wong teasers. Um, I'm going to be combining. Oh, well, I guess I have to say it. 
I got the Bills up to two and a half. I'm going to be combining them with the Packers. Uh, I'm just saying that now because Packers are a separate video. We'll be talking about it later. I just realized I have to do a different angle for them now. But so, yeah, um, that's kind of helping with my Packers kiss. I love the uh, the Bills one Caesar here. And it's it's simple. I don't see how the Chiefs get them off the field. This Bills team, we're talking top five rushing pass EPA. And this Chiefs defense, man, like great coverage unit, but man, they can't stop the run. And I think you can use the run here to kind of set up these Josh Allen um, deep balls. And which is going to come to hopefully great reward because now it's hopefully it's at less coverage to kind of negate some of these backbreaking Allen turnovers that we have oh so come to love. And then on the other end, I think this Bills, um, since they kind of had that stumble with injuries, they have been steadily improving. I think they can get to this. I don't want to call it a weak Chiefs offense, but I'm just running out of adjectives here. Discombobulated. Oh, we're using that. Uh, Kelsey, he's looking slower. He's looking kind of sluggish. Um, I truly think, and they just won't say it. I truly think him and Mahomes are dealing with injuries that they just refuse to say out loud. That um, was it the Broncos game where Kelsey had that non-contact knee freak thing um, that we thought like his season was over. Uh, Mahomes, every time he gets like kind of weirdly tackled, he's always limping on that same ankle he had issues with last year. I truly think there's something going on. And then that's not even factoring in that this past coaching group that has just has not stepped up when they've needed to. I don't think the Chiefs can honestly match the Bills' scoring pace in this one. It's just a really bad spot for the Chiefs. I I, I got the Bills. Now, I do, I I will admit, I shouldn't be terrified of narratives, but I am terrified of the late <laughs> Magic uh, Chiefs action here uh, to potentially cover that thing. So that's why I will gladly take the Bills in the Wong teaser, but it would not also surprise me if the Bills just run away in this one. Yeah, and part of the uh, luck that I wanted to I wanted to just shout out this stat is the Bills have the fifth highest point differential in the NFL at plus one hundred one, and they're still six and six somehow. The Chiefs, meanwhile, eight and four, but they're below the Bills in point differential. Um, basically, saying the Bills have lost a lot of re- really close games. They're due for some positive regression, and I think they get that this week. Um, the other point I want to make: Schwartz has talked about the Chiefs' pass rush. Bill's offensive line has been elite. First in adjusted sack rate allowed, fourth in line yards, quietly one of the better units in the NFL this season. They're going to hold up here, in my opinion. I think James Cook could have a big game. Really excited to see more out of Dalton Kincaid and Cleo Shakir as really big parts of this offense. But I just think the Bills have more answers on offense at the skill position uh, spots. And I think Josh Allen, with the season on the line, goes in the arrowhead and gets the win. Schwartz, you want to um, rebuttal anything that I said? I actually think it's really interesting if the Bills pull this one out, they're a game behind the Chiefs with head-to-head. Not that they're going to win the division and make that matter for seeding, but I just think it's very interesting how differently these teams are perceived and they could be one game away from being just right there. Uh, yeah, I think on paper a lot of the things you guys said make a lot of sense. I'm too, I'm definitely concerned about Kelsey. Mahomes might be hurt right now, but Kelsey might be trending towards done. I mean, he's a six foot five dude who's like 34 years old uh, and comes for everybody. I don't, I don't know that he's done, done, but he might be done being the most dominant receiving threat in the league uh, for some time uh, or forever. He'd be done forever. So I that gives me a little bit of pause. I just I am not sure that the Bills' offense is going to be able to do this like kind of score every possession thing we're talking about against the Chiefs' defense. But you guys make some compelling points. I think that there's just something about these legendary quarterback, head coach, like dynasty juggernaut type of situations where they just find a way every single time especially at home I hated when people would just kind of always say this is it and this is the spot where the Patriots stumble and it never would be I've tried not to be that guy for the Chiefs dynasty but yeah on paper this could be this is could be a spot where they're vulnerable I just think we've seen this film a handful of times and I'm going to stay on the Chiefs side as long as the numbers with me which it was I was able to grab that two and a half I'll give you a pop. That is a hot take. Oh, what was that? What was it? Uh, couldn't hear you there. I'll give you props. That is a hot take of the Dun Kelsey Dunn thing. Not like not like he's about to retire tomorrow, but he's he's six foot five, thirty four years old, and accumulating lower body injuries. It's just he's not going to play. Let, let's talk about like if he is perfectly healthy. His horizon is like four more years at most. I mean, we're not talking about we're talking about quarterbacks making it to forty, not six. I guess I just didn't realize how old he was. Yeah, he was. Um, he was born in nineteen eighty nine. He's he just he just turned thirty four. 
Yeah. yeah and it, so at best he had three or four years left. And when you start accumulating those injuries, you're a big dude putting a lot of stress on your lower body. How, how much more mileage can you have left after you start getting banged up? It's not a knock on him. He's had an amazing career. I think he's the third best tight end of all time and a first ballot hall of famer, but you know, two rings, handful of all pro nods, almost a hundred touchdowns. I think time comes for everyone and there's no shame if that's what this is for Travis after this season. The other point I want to make is if you agree with me that the Bills can go on the road and win this game in the Arrowhead, you should be buying Bills features in the Super Bowl market. You can still get them at 45 to 1 on DraftKings, which is an insane number. Um, yes, their playoff chances are, are looking a little bit grim, and they would have to be, they probably have to be damn near close to perfect the rest of the way. But after this, they do get the Cowboys at home in a game where I think they'll be favored. And then the final week, they'll play the Dolphins in Miami. Not a spot where they've done well historically, but if they win that game, they're in the playoffs probably. And the last thing the number two seed wants to see in the first round is going to be the Chiefs as a seven seed. I think they find a way to get there. And once they're in the playoffs, they're a very live dog. So I love the Bills at 45 to one to win the Super Bowl because this team, if they get in the playoffs, they're, they have the, the caliber of a Super Bowl team. They're sixth in DVOA, fifth in net EPA. This is one of the better teams in the NFL that's continually gotten unlucky, but if they go on a run to close the season out here, I think they're very live in the Super Bowl race. Uh, Cody, any thoughts on that aspect of it? My only pushback on that is I'm probably going to wait. Um, Cause you said what they got Cowboys next. I just, I don't see it dipping too far down. Um, it just, I guess it also depends if everything else plays out with who's like around them too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you could sell me on buying them now. They're definitely someone I have been looking at for that exact same reason. I just, I kind of, I, I want to, I, I'm toying with just being greedy. I'm just waiting until maybe Cowboys or in that, or to see what the overreaction is to them beating the chiefs. Cause if they squeak out a win, we're talking about, we dip down to 45, we dip down to 40. Um, because at the same time, I'm a lot higher on the Cowboys. The Cowboys could shut that down <laughs> and ruin that dream. But, um, yeah, I do. I really, really like the angle. I think I just might get greedy and wait one more week. Wayne, what do you I think, think you about were... um, What do you think about the Bills? They're sitting somewhere around 4-1 to one just to make the playoffs in the AFC. Do you see any value there uh, based on a similar angle? Yeah, I think, you, I think that's a fine bet. I'd rather just bet them to win the Super Bowl, though, because I think once they get in the playoffs, uh, you have a very hedgeable number, like Cody likes to say. So, I I think I'd just rather shoot for the upside, but definitely don't hate that angle. I mean, this is a playoff team. Like, Schwartz, I know you have a lot of things that you dislike about Josh Allen and the Bills team, but I don't even think you would disagree. This is a playoff caliber team, right? Uh, I mean, in a vacuum, yeah, they may have dug themselves too much of a hole, and this is a very competitive AFC, so I don't know that they'll get there. But, yeah, this isn't a team that's like, a you know, dead upon arrival as soon as they hit the playoffs, if that's what happens, especially... I mean, there's so many tiebreakers. They oh. can even hop to the sixth seed. All of a sudden, you're not looking at the Chiefs or the Ravens anymore. Or, shoot, you might be because the Chiefs, Ravens, Dolphins, one of them has to be the three seed. This is a tough AFC. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the Bills have the ability to make some noise if they're able to find the postseason. Josh is playing his best football. But I, I think I've, I've made my point clear on Josh. It's not that I don't think he can do good stuff. Even in the macro, I think it all smooths out to some pretty good numbers. But, He's just his mistakes come in clusters and in the postseason that's not okay. You don't get to have a good run of four games on average. You have to have four good games, can great games consecutively, or it's over. So I don't think they're gonna win the Super Bowl even if they do get in, but you're right that forty five to one is tremendously hedgeable the second they get in. Because they're not gonna be even if they're playing a top seed, they're not gonna be plus five hundred or anything. It's the Buffalo Bills with Josh Allen. No, they'll be they'll be near a pick 'em, I think, if they play the Chiefs or the Ravens in the first round. Um the other, thing, the other thing, too, is the Chiefs, we talked about it, have a lot of issues on offense. The Ravens are without Mark Andrews. I think that hampers their offensive upside. Dolphins, we haven't had a chance to talk about this week, though, but I'm really rising on them in the AFC race. But I don't think this is a gauntlet in AFC, as we thought at, at one point earlier in the season. And the, ja the Jaguars, too, not to mention, Char we, we don't know about Trevor Lawrence's status of the ankle injury. So there's an opportunity here uh, for the Bills. But Cody, any other thoughts here? I mean, they're literally like one game behind the fifth seed. We're t we're potentially talking them getting a first round matchup against the Jags or I, the Jags if they manage to hold on to their spot or um, the Texans or or even the Colts. The Colts. Oh what? wow! Oh man! Put my I wouldn't even have to do anything. My twenty, my two hundred to one, and my forty to one, <laughs> or whatever I'd get the Bills at. 
That just, that'd be a dream. I could just get one of those in the second round automatically. Um, yeah, I, I just, man, I just don't know if I want to wait a week or not. Um, uh, just see, because like I said, if they don't beat the chiefs, you're probably not being the, ta- the cowboy. Like it, the dream would be dead. I, I think that the odds would move as soon as they beat the Chiefs. I think the odds would move the second they beat the Chiefs. I mean, we saw what happened to the Jalen Hurts MVP market after that game. I think people still hold these Chiefs in way too high of a regard just because of what they've done rather than what they are. I think you'd see the Bills' odds. Uh, I mean, they wouldn't like come all the way down, but I don't think you'd get anything close to a 45 again if they're able to win at Arrowhead. Oh, if, 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 they, win, if they win this week, you're not seeing this number again. Um, because that would put them right back into the playoff picture. But if they lose this week, you might see a way better number. So if you disagree with me and you think the Chiefs well, win this game, the then, issue is right. it depends on the others. If, if, if the week, Steelers, if, if, if everyone else wins and maintains their spot too, that's why I said this number might still just hover around 40 is my guess. It will dip if they obviously win, but I don't yeah. know. Um, I, th- I The more I keep like thinking about this, I think actually this week probably would be the week to buy them. But I don't know. Something something I'm going to be digging into. Um, I'm going to take a look at my portfolio, then uh, then we'll we'll make a decision here. Yeah, I think the bills are alive uh, moving forward. So then I'll do it for us. Schwartz, any final thoughts before we get out of here? No, uh, this is an inter- this is honestly a quietly interesting week. There's a lot of games that we could look back at as ones that shaped this season. So super excited to see how it all goes. Wish there were more starting quarterbacks healthy, but this is going to be a fun football weekend. It always is. Yeah, should be a great Sunday slate. Hope you guys enjoy. Hopefully we can bring you some winning picks on this show. Stay tuned for our Sunday slate player prop video that comes out on Sunday morning. Shorts and I will have you covered with some more player prop picks for this week. Been on a nice run over there. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, Stay tuned for our Monday night football coverage as well. Two Monday night football games this week. And that'll do it for us. Hope you guys enjoy the games. And we'll catch you on the next one.